Hello, my name is Jim Latimer. What we are about to show you in this video is the equipment, the preparation and the installation of a road pavement sensor. You will see in the following some of the equipment you may require. You do not have to have the same equipment you see here, but similar. Fabic is the epoxy mainly used in the USA. In Germany we use Bucofix, which you will also see in this video. We installed an IRS 31 Pro and an IRS 31 Pro in the left lane of the freeway. Here you can see how the pavement marked up for the installation. Once the marking is finished, he starts on step two. The machine he is using is driven by a generator and cooled with water. He then bores a hole at an angle approximately 6 inches from the side of the freeway. This machine uses compressed air to bore and drive the borer. The next step is sawing the pavement to enable us to lay the cables from the sensors. This machine is slightly smaller than the ones you saw earlier and the blade is also cooled by water. The blade is approximately 13 millimeters wide. Once the sawing is finished, we go on to cleaning and preparing to install the pavement sensor.
After cleaning, we clean out the holes we have made for the sensor, being specifically careful to ensure there is enough room for the housing and external cable joints. Once completed, we once again clean using compressed air to ensure all surfaces are clean and dry. Now we can go on to the installation. First, rolling out the sensor cable to check for damage and to avoid any kinks in the cable when pulling through the conduit. The technician now puts the sensor into its position and gently presses the cable into the socket, avoiding any damage to the cable. We then check the sensor is in the correct position, level with the pavement surface and pull the cables through the conduit. He is now mixing the buccal fix. Here you can see a picture of Fabic, the epoxy you use in America. He is not using fast steel. What he does is he pours buccal fix into the hole and then pushes the sensor down into it. This ensures there are no air pockets under the sensor where water may collect and freeze. He then inserts this white foam rubber to stop the cables from pushing upwards. When he is sure the sensor is in the correct position, he fills the hole with the buccal fix epoxy, ensuring that no damage occurs to the face of the sensor. Once all the sensors are in and the epoxy poured, we start to fill the socket. First with foam rubber to protect the cable, then with sand.
He then brushes on a component to ensure a good connection between the pavement surface and the epoxy. The epoxy here is melted asphalt or tar, extremely hot. This is why we put sand in to protect the cable from the heat. He then pours it in carefully with gloves on. After everything is hard, we remove the installation help and then replace the screws and tighten up to two newton meters, being careful not to damage the sensor. Then the surface of the epoxy is smoothed with a grinder, being extremely careful not to come close or in contact with the, the head of the sensor. In this picture, you can see how the epoxy has been very carefully smoothed over to show a good result. The only problem is they have gone with the grinder over the electronics and this would have to be changed. You can now see here the finished installation. In the following we will be showing you some pictures of what we consider to be good jobs and bad jobs. Number one, two sensors installed in the pavement, very good, very level with the pavement surface. Picture two and three and four, not good at all. The epoxy is not up to the level of the pavement or to the level of the sensor. Could be taken out by a snowplow. Number six is good. We hope you can take some information from this video and it is helpful for any future installations you may undertake.